In this video, we're going to cover volumetric painting. This is something a lot of my viewers have been asking to see. So I'm just going to go over a basic workflow using volumetric painting. So we'll start off in the voxel workspace. And for this example, we'll just do something as simple as a, a brick. So we'll start off with a cube. And let's just get something that's a little bit more appropriately sized. So maybe something like this. All right, so we'll, we'll start with this. The first thing we want to do before doing any volumetric painting is I would highly recommend that you make sure that your density has enough resolution. So I typically go to the little grid uh, icon here in the sculpt tree. It's going to depend on how large your model is as well. Um, so for now, I'll try eight and then hit apply. And I can see that I have just over a million so maybe I'll bump it up one more level, get us close to five. There we go, around five million. That's good enough. Great. If you see this flashing, that's just because we have the preview model here. We need to just switch our tool to a different tool. So just click on anything else and you'll see your preview goes away. All right, so let's get started. We're still in the sculpt space. So we're gonna go ahead and switch to smart materials. Now, if you select something in a smart material, you can't actually apply it, not just yet. So what we're going to do, so what we're going to do is we're going to find a material that might closely represent a brick. And I just so happen to have something here. It's not great, but it's something that's good enough to, to sell the idea. So if you click once, you see that nothing's really happened. What you'll need to do is click twice or jump into the paint room. But if you click twice, it automatically throws you into the paint room and pulls up the material editor. And then now you can use your smart material preview and kind of see what's going on. I always start off by hitting the reset scale. It looks like it's pretty much there already. So now we'll go ahead and reduce, reduce the scale to get a little tighter uh, tiling. Okay, I think that might be good. So we can start with this. Um, I am going to reduce the bump map. To something a little bit more like this. Now that we have this, we can go ahead and just use the fill tool. And this is where your voxel depth comes in. So on the fill tool under the tool options, you're going to see this voxel paint depth. Uh, right now it's set at two. Um, I'm going to reduce that down to maybe one. We don't really need this to be a very thick surface. And so let's go ahead and fill this layer. But before we do, we want to make sure we give it a layer. Um, I typically don't like to work on layer zero. So we'll go ahead and add a layer. Let me save this material. I'll add a layer and we'll call that outer brick and then fill. So we'll click the layer option on the tools options here, and that will fill with the color. Make sure that your filters are all turned on so you get depth, color, and your glossiness. And then hit fill layer. So now we've got this nice brick layer here, and now we want to work on the inner texture. If I just hide this layer, You'll see this was the original texture that we had, which is not going to do. So, okay, so let's go back to the sculpt room. So here is where we can work on our um, inner material. So let me just reduce my pen size so it doesn't get in the way. So we'll go ahead and turn off the outer brick smart material layer. And now we can focus on the inside of the brick. And to do this, we don't want to be in the Smart Materials. Let's jump over to the Shaders tab. And if you don't have the Shaders tab, then you just make sure you go to Windows, Panels, and uh, you can select what, what panel you want to open. So here's Shaders, and then you can dock it wherever you want. Okay, so now uh, let's find a texture that has kind of the grittiness that we're looking for. 
Um, with brick, we can just kind of give it a, a color or you can add a specific texture. But in this case, I'll use something that has some textural quality already and then uh, I'll work from there. So I think I will start off with this one right here, this, um, this old copper. And so when you click here, it just fills the voxel or fills the surface. And this is filled all the way through. Now this is too fine. I think I'm going to change the scale. So in order to make some adjustments to this material, you're going to want to go ahead and right click and choose edit current object shader. And so now what we can do is either replace the texture that we have or make adjustments to it. I'm going to go ahead and just start making adjustments to it. First thing I want to do is change that scale. So I'm going to make it a little larger. Maybe something like this would work pretty well. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to get rid of metalness. All right. And now I'm going to work with the normal map. So with bumpiness, I'll go ahead and increase this value. Something pretty coarse. Maybe something like that would be good. But this does not look like a brick material. So we're going to make some color adjustments. So we'll go ahead and just kind of pick a color that we think might work. Maybe something like that actually works. So I'll say OK. And then for these other colors, I'll just match it. So if you just click on the color and then click on the color that you want to clone from, then that'll just go ahead and, and copy that. Say OK. Do the same thing. Click and then click on the color you want. And now we have kind of a brick-like pattern. We'll just go ahead and say OK for now. And let's see what the other texture, the original smart material texture looks like. I actually think that's going to work pretty well. Now that we have all this already set up, the inner and outer, we can start sculpting. So I use the wet clay and I make sure that act as uh, vox hide is enabled. So now if I start sculpting, you can see that I'm revealing the inside of the brick. So I'll make it a little bit more severe. There we go. And if I uh, want to render it and kind of see it with some lighting, just go ahead and hit render. And that actually looks pretty good. All right, so back in the sculpt room. And you can continue working like this. If you um, I typically, for the for bricks, I typically keep it really thin because that way I can paint chips. So, for example, if I just kind of scratch or chip a bit of the um, uh, brick, I reveal what's underneath it. Even if I scratch the brick, maybe I can get some scratches in here. Like so. You get some kind of realistic results. But it depends on what you want. So a brick usually does not have a thick surface. There's just a, a coating on the outside. And, um, and then this looks feels pretty natural to me. If you wanted to make it thicker, we can go we can do go ahead and do that. Now. Uh, the, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we uh, restore the brick back to its original um, volume. So the reason I use Vox Hide is because now I can actually, I can return the voxels back to their original state. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and switch this over to a uh, rectangular selection, hold control, and then just select the entire brick. And that replaces or returns all my voxels back to where they were. It unhides them basically. So now let's go back and do some painting. So now let's go ahead and increase the thickness of this uh, original smart material. So we'll go back to the smart material. Just go back to paint, actually. We'll choose the uh, smart material brick. And we're already on the fill tool. And if you're not, go ahead and select it. And then now we can change this voxel paint depth to something more severe. Maybe make it like 25 just to really see the effect of it. And I think what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to change the color of the brick. And now let me apply 
that brighter orange. And I'll fill this new layer. Like so. And now I have this kind of bright orange layer. And the reason I did that is it might be a little easier to see the depths uh, because the, the colors before were just too similar. So let's go back to sculpt. And so now if we start sculpting, we should see a different effect. So now when I start sculpting, you'll notice that you got to push a little harder and start scraping deeper into the surface before you see the inner uh, surface of that brick. So let me go a little bit more severe. And now you can see that there is actually a depth to that outer paint, or sorry, to that outer surface before entering into the uh, brick surface. Actually, that looks pretty good like that too. But it's a pretty natural way of working. Um, you can also, you know, use all your other tools. So if I wanted to, to soften it, just go ahead and press the shift key and reduce your uh, smoothing way down. And uh, what you can do, well, maybe a little more than that. So then what you can do is you can start softening some of that, the graininess. So let me actually increase my... And let's see. Okay, we can start smoothing some of that out, just so it's not overly, overly rough. And just take some of those peaks off. There we go. There we go. We can add them back. And we can smooth them out. All right. If you really want to make it very grainy, then you can uh, kind of spike it kind of high on the uh, intensity. And then you can kind of make it super grainy. So it's almost sandy. Like that. And if you ever uh, feel like you've gone too far, go ahead and hold the control key. Start bringing some of that back. Maybe change your uh, brush type as well. And you get a little bit more randomness out of it. All right, there you go. And that's how you work with volumetric materials. One thing to remember too is the inside material is always a live material, meaning that if I were to go to my shaders and select another material to replace it with, you'll see that it will... So as I switch through the different materials, you'll see that it will update the inner surface. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and that it helps you in getting along with your volumetric painting. Leave comments below if there's something else that you'd like to see. Uh, leave that in the comments and I'll see about trying to create a video that might represent that. All right, have a great day.